the old curiosity shop. The Charles Dickens Children's Collection. Life at the Old Curiosity Shop. Our story starts with Nell Trent. Nell's parents died when she was very young. She was 13 years old now and could barely remember them at all. Nell lived with her grandfather. He was kind and caring, and best of all, he ran the strangest and most mysterious shop you could ever imagine. The old curiosity shop sold everything from ancient suits of armor and rusty swords to ten antique chairs and tapestries. Nell and her grandfather lived in the little flat above the shop. Their lives were full of fun and magic. In the winter, Nell would read to her grandfather by the fireside. She told him stories of heroes and dragons. And knights. Her grandfather, in return, told her stories of her mother and how Nell looked and spoke just like her. In the summer, they often walked in the fields and played hide and seek among the green trees. They came home tired but happy. Nell's grandfather employed a young man called Christopher Nubbles to work in the shop. Everyone called him Kit. Kit looked younger than he was, with a cheery, boyish face that was forever stretched into a smile. He was very fond of Nell and always tried to look out for her. Nell's grandfather wanted to do the best he could for his granddaughter. He knew that he wouldn't live forever, and he worried about what would happen to Nell after he was gone. The old curiosity shop did not make much money, and so Nell might be left in poverty. Yet, strangely, people believed that the old man was rich. They thought pretend a way to hide their riches. The simple life he and Nell led was all one person who believed this was a young man called Richard Swiveller. Truly, Richard was a kind-hearted fellow, but he was not very smart and was rather lazy. It crossed his mind that it would be a good idea, one day, to marry Nell Trent. After all, if Nell's grandfather was joy rich, then Nell would inherit lots of his money when he died. Then she would share it with Richard. What Richard did not know, however, was that there was no money at all. They had so little money, in fact, that Nell's grandfather turned to gambling. He would spend hours playing card games, trying to win a fortune for his dear Nell. But the more games he played, the more money he lost. He never won a single penny, let alone a fortune. Desperate, Nell's grandfather decided to borrow money so that he could keep on gambling. That's when the trouble really started. He borrowed money from a man called Daniel Quilp. Quilp had an office on the river bank opposite the Tower of London. He lent money to people, which they had to pay back with extra on top. If they couldn't pay back the money then he would take away whatever property or possessions they owned. Quilp was not a pleasant person to meet, or even to look at. He was very short, but his head was M-O-O-M would have bobbineb large enough to fit the body of a giant. He had mean black eyes and wiry black hairs sprouting from his chin. His fingernails were crooked and long. But Quilp's worst feature by far was his smile. When he pulled back his lips, it revealed the few hideous, yellow teeth that were left in his mouth. Even Quilp's voice was was horrible. It was sharp and cutting and had no trace of kindness at all. Your last loan was seventy pounds, Quilp spat at Nell's grandfather. You lost it all in one night and could not pay me back. Why would I lend you more money? It will be different this time, Mr. Quilp, answered the old man. I have dreamt three nights running of winning a large sum. Oh, you have had a dream, have you? sneered Quilp. His mouth hung open in that rotten smile. Please, pleaded the old man. Don't help me for my sake, help me for the sake of Nell Nell? Oh yes, the orphan, said Quilp. 
Poor little Nell, everything I have done has been for her, said her grandfather. Quilp drew out his pocket watch and made a show of examining it very carefully. I'm sorry, I can't stay, he said, not sounding sorry at all. I have a business meeting? Of course, Quilp did not really have a business meeting. As he walked out of the old curiosity shop, Quilp looked back and saw the sadness on the grandfather's face. He's